Hi, I'm William Everhart, Director of Training here at Lodestone. Today I'd like to show you how to remove an image background using Adobe Photoshop. Transparent backgrounds are great for product shots, company logos, or any time you want to display part of a photo without the background. Because the background is transparent, you can more effectively incorporate the image into documents with background colors or patterns, like PowerPoint presentations, Word documents, or even e-learning presentations. Over the course of this video, I'm going to show you how to prepare your image for transparency, to make a quick selection, and then refine that selection for accuracy, to remove your unwanted background, and finally save your document with full support for transparent pixels. We've got a lot to do, so let's get started. Here is the image I want to work with. The first thing I'm going to do is duplicate that image. This way, I always have a backup copy that I can come back to if I make a mistake. Next, I'll open the copy in Photoshop. The first thing we need to do is modify the background layer so that it will accept transparent pixels. To do this, I mouse over to the Layers panel here on the right of my screen, double-click the name Background, and just rename it. I'll call it Melon. I'll click OK. And now my layer is ready to accept transparent pixels. Next, I'll make a selection of the melon. For this exercise, I'm going to use the Quick Selection tool. Using this tool, I'll mouse to the center of the melon, click and drag outward towards the edge. As you can see, Photoshop begins to make the selection for me. Next, I'll zoom in so I can start refining the edge of my selection. I'll get my zoom tool, and I'm going to zoom in here towards the bottom of the melon. As you can see, I have a few extra pixels here at the bottom. I'll reposition my screen using the hand tool, and then go back to my quick selection tool. Here at the top, in the tool options bar, the quick selection tool has three options. I'm going to choose the third option here to subtract from my selection. I will paint over the areas that I do not want, and Photoshop removes those from my selection. I'm going to paint a few more places here, and then we'll be done. Okay, not too bad. Now my selection is still a little rough around the edges, so Photoshop gives me a tool to help refine this edge even further. First, I'm going to zoom back out. I'll go to the View menu. I'm going to choose Fit on Screen. That shows me my entire document. Here in the Tool Options bar is a button called Refine Edge. If for some reason your version of Photoshop does not show this, you can always go to the Select menu and choose Refine Edge. I get the Refine Edge dialog box. Let me move it out of the way. And now we'll play around with some of the options. The ones I'm interested in here are in the middle. Adjust Edge. So I'll try the smoothing to smooth out some of those edges. The feather to soften the edge just a little bit. This will help me blend this melon into my project. The other options are contrast. Now contrast does exactly the opposite of feather and I don't really want that here so I'll leave it alone. Lastly I have shift edge. With this one I can either grab more of the background by shifting to the right or I can shift to the left and actually shrink wrap this selection around the melon even more. When I'm happy with my selection, I click OK. Now I have a refined selection. How do I get rid of the background? Well, if I try to use the delete key, oops, I delete the melon. Let me undo that. Edit, undo. So what I really need to do is flip this selection. In Photoshop, we call this inverse, and you'll find this command underneath the select menu. When I inverse the selection, you'll notice that my selection is not only around the melon itself, but the edge of the document. Now I simply hit my delete key, my background is gone. Now to take advantage of these transparent pixels, I have to save it in a proper format. 
I like to use the Save for Web feature. You go to File, choose Save for Web. Depending on your version of Photoshop, it may say Save for Web and Devices. It's the same thing. Here I get a preview, and you can see that I'm only showing part of the melon. If I click and drag, I can move the melon up, but the melon is still quite large. In the lower right-hand corner of my screen, I can choose an image size. So, I'll just reduce the size of this to something a little more compatible with my PowerPoint presentation. Let's say 480 pixels wide. Now I'll go to the very top and choose my preset. For true transparency support, I want to use the PNG format. I'll click Save. I'll rename this. And click Save. That's it. Now my image is ready to be inserted into my PowerPoint presentation, and it will have this completely transparent background. So let's recap. First, we duplicated our image so that we could keep the original for future projects. We modified the background layer to allow for transparent pixels. We made a selection of our target object, then refined that selection to give a cleaner edge. We inversed the selection and deleted the background pixels. Finally, we saved the image in the PNG format for full support of transparent pixels. Now our image is ready to be inserted into our presentation or web page with a truly transparent background. For additional tutorials or more in-depth training, please visit the Lodestone website.